Angela and I'm a product support specialist here at Blast Motion and today I'm just going to show you how easy it is to go ahead and get started using your new Blast Motion sensor. Um, I did want to mention that there are a few key pointers I wanted to talk about and I've added them into the notes section on the right hand side of your screen. So if you wanted a quick and easy answer, go ahead and refer to that. But other than that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you guys should all have received your Blast Motion boxes. In this box, there are a few things that I wanted to go over. Uh, there is the wireless charging dock and cord that goes with it. There is the rubber attachment that goes on the knob of your vat and the little white sensor itself. So I wanted to mention when you guys first get your Blast Motion sensors, you are going to need to charge it in order to get it registered to your app. So I wanted to go over the different LED lights that you guys will receive once you plug in your wireless charging dock. And on my end, I've just plugged it in and I have this red LED light. This means that there is charge going to the sense or the charging dock, but nothing is charging it. Once we place the sensor on the charger, you'll hear a little chime and that little LED light will now turn blue. Notice that the blast logo is faced up and it's not flipped where the barcode is showing. So place that on there correctly and you're good to go. Um, the sensor will take about an hour to charge and I wanted to mention once you guys start using your blast and you go to charge your sensor again, it's really important that you don't leave the sensor on the charger for a while. If you do leave that sensor on the charger for a while, it will show that it's been charged at 100%. It will show this little LED light being green. But once it reaches 100%, it stops charging that sensor. So it's actually sitting there on the charger showing green, but it's using battery. So what I've done, um, and I found this to be pretty successful, um, I've plugged this in into my kitchen area or wherever I'm constantly walking by. And anytime I notice the sensor is green, I'll just pick it up, I'll place it back down, and it'll then charge the sensor all the way back up to 100%. This ensures that I have a fully charged sensor before I go out and hit at practice. So getting that best, pra best practice is gonna help you out a lot. Um, and again, once the sensor is fully charged, you're ready to register that sensor. I wanted to show you too how to properly embed the sensor in the rubber attachment before we move on uh, because it's pretty simple. So once your charger is charged or your sensor is charged, go ahead and place it in that rubber attachment that you got. And a lot of people are, um, they say it's kind of hard to get in there. That's on purpose because we don't want that sensor moving around when you're hitting or throwing the bat after you've swung. We want to make sure it stays in there and gets the best accurate information for you guys. Um, so what I've done is I've completely embedded my sensor in my attachment. And again, notice how the little logo is facing outward. So if this was on the knob of my bat, it's going to face outward. Um, I've also wanted to note that I've completely embedded this sensor, meaning there's a little rubber lip, if you guys can hear it, um, that is on the outside of that sensor. So. I want to make sure it's completely embedded in there because that little rubber lip acts as a cushion. So when the player fouls a ball off or doesn't hit a ball, you know, completely on the sweet spot, it sends a vibration down to the knob. And that little silicone um, buffer is actually going to save that plastic sensor because if you think about it, if hard plastic is vibrating on hard plastic, it's actually going to wear and tear that attachment. So we want to make sure there's a little bit of a buffer between those two hard plastics. So there, I've done it. I've charged my sensor. Um, I know it's good to go, but now I need to register it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip up the rubber attachment so it looks like a, like a little flying saucer. And once I do this, I can actually charge the sensor on the rubber wireless charging dock. Um, and what this is actually going to do is it keeps you from having to take your sensor in and out. Um, and it actually saves your attachment life and your sensor life. So I can always just easily just place it back on the charger like that and it will charge. And when I'm ready to hit, I'll just flip that back down over the knob of the bat. But let's go ahead and get started on registering our sensor. 
Let me go ahead and switch screens here. And essentially what I'm gonna show you is my app. So I've opened up my app after I've logged in and I'm going to go to the hamburger menu up at the top left hand corner. And once I do that, uh, it's gonna pull up my sensors and I wanna register my new sensor. So I'm gonna select that. And what I'm gonna do is add my sensor. It's gonna open up my camera screen. And this is when I need to take my sensor off of the charger and I flip it over to that barcode. So making sure one, your Bluetooth is on as well as your Wi-Fi. I'm going to put the barcode in the camera picture. I'm going to do as it says where I flip the sensor up and down. Um, if I have recorded swings previously, I can download them, but I do not want these swings. So I'm going to say no, and I'm going to continue to flip the sensor up and down until it gets connected. Awesome, so now we are connected um, and you guys are good to go. So that is how you add a sensor. Again, if you are just getting that sensor out of the box, you will need Wi-Fi to first register it. If you have registered before, you will be good to go. The app, once it's open, will look for your sensor serial number using Bluetooth and it will connect automatically. Um, if I ever wanted to add another sensor, it's going to be the same area where I can go to my sensor library. I'm going to click the addition button and then from there I can add another sensor. I can also manually add the sensor serial number if I needed to. Um, and if you still have connection issues after trying to use your camera and manually input it, go ahead and select the having trouble option. Um, the very bottom, I'm not sure if you guys can really see it. It's right here at uh, the right hand side says having trouble. I'm gonna select that option and it's going to look for my other sensor that I want to add via Bluetooth. Um, other than that, you guys are good to go to get started. It's that simple. Um, and again, once you guys are done hitting uh, and you have used your sensor, all you need to do is, is flip that little rubber attachment up. Looks like a little flying saucer. Place it on the USB, or I'm sorry, the wireless charger and you are good to go. Other than that, you guys are ready to swing.